testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Three uh, Quick Hits. Uh, it, it's good to be back. Um, we got a fun show today. We got some interesting news I, I really wanted to get into um, in, in regard to this uh, Progre and Zepeda purse bid. Uh, that went to something called Marv Nation. Um, we're going to get into that, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors trying to give you all that content that we can i uh, try to pump out a lot more content for you pump out content for you every day um and also please subscribe to the other channel texas boxing scene on youtube texas boxing scene um on youtube all proceeds from that channel go to autism research and recovery all right guys let's get into today's show um first of all i want to say pro grade versus jose cepeda is an a plus fight it's a 50 50 fight it's what i think uh, personally, is the two best 140 pounders in the world. Uh, we can debate that back and forth, but I I I thought Pro Gray uh, beat Josh Taylor. I I think he deserved that win. I I, I think um, Pro Gray. I think Taylor is, is has outgrown the weight class now. Um, and I I think what uh, Zapata did with uh, Josue Vargas is. You know, ten out of ten. Um, that was a fight. You know, um, I really do. I I think these are the the, the two best guys. If when, when it's all said and done, I I do think these are the two best guys in the weight class. Um, so it's only fitting, you know, that we get this uh, for for a world title. <clears throat> um, it's uh, for the WBC 140 pound world title, of course. Um. The purse bid went to something called Marv Nation. Uh, it's a $2.4 million purse bid. They doubled uh, PPC, $1.2 million. Um, so the, the Pro Gray and uh, Taylor will both receive $1.2 million. They'll, they'll, split, they'll split that pot. Um, I don't really know what to make of this, and and, and I have a lot of thoughts. I start, first to give you a little background of Marv Nation. Um, they're a, a California-based promotion. Um, you can find them on social media. I mean, it's for a small promotion. They seem to have some things going for them. Um, as far as I can go back, they only started promoting fights last year. Uh, but they're they're putting out a lot of shows, um, almost a show a month. Um, they, their last show, well, they have a, they have a co promotional credit on a Golden Boy card uh, coming up um, in, in on Thursday, September eighth, um, in Costa Rica. Um, again, that's a Golden Boy card where they have a, a co promotional deal, a co promotional credit. Their last show before that was was just this past Saturday. Um, in California, something called Pico Rivera, California. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, and, and they had a nice little main event. Um, undefeated upstart prospect. I think he's like 18 years old. Nathan Rodriguez uh, stopped Chucky Flores in the first round. Um, so a couple of thoughts on that, right? Like, I, I, obviously, you have a stud prospect like Nathan Rodriguez. Um, that means something, right, to get a prospect like Nathan Rodriguez. Um, and then to, you, know, you get a veteran, you get a good opponent, Chucky Flores. I, I don't know what they're paying these guys. I, I'm thinking you got to pay Chucky Flores somewhere in the, in, in the range of 20 grand. You probably got to put pay Nathan Rodriguez close to that. I would think, you know, Nathan Rodriguez is, is a, is a really talented prospect. Um, I, I was trying to find this thing. If this thing was streamed online, it wasn't, um, you know, I, I really wanted, I, I wanted to see this fight. It was in his hometown. I, I'm guessing you had to pay him. He's just 18. Like I said, he's all, he only, this was only his ninth fight, but he's 907 knockouts. You know, for an 18-year-old, he's being moved along pretty quickly. Um, 
he fought again. He he fought largely in Costa Rica. He's fought in Mexico. Um, I believe this was his first fight in the United States. Um, you know, I I don't know what the connection is with Marv Nation and Costa Rica. Um, I don't I I don't know. But obviously, they have some. They have this guy that fought most of the fights in Costa Rica. You know, if you're in Southern California, really easy to go over to Mexico. They went to Costa Rica for a reason. Um, you know, they could have had him fought in Texas when he was 17. They probably could have had him. They probably could have had him fight, but they went to Costa Rica for a reason, um, where he built up his record. Um, and it's a good looking fighter. Um, I mean, so again, I don't know what their deal is. I don't know where this money is coming from. Is this, you know, two point to bid $2.4 million without a TV contract. Where do you think you're going to get your money back from? Like, you're not going to get your money back from uh, sponsors, not $2.4 million. And that's just the main event. You still have an undercard. You still have a venue. You still have a million other expenses you need to pay for. Accommodations, travel. You you haven't paid for any of that. You know, you guys a little bit more in the promotion business want to answer that question. How much of a bill is he looking at here? This seems – look, I'm not against it. I, I like that the little man – Got the bid, right? He got the fight. It's a great fight. So he, he bid on a great fight, and he got a great fight. Uh, what's interesting to me is, like he said, he's California-based. Most of his shows in the United States are in California. But then he says this fight's going to happen within 90 days in either Vegas or Atlantic City. Why would you put it in California? So a, a lot of this seems weird to me, right? Like, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, but I'm excited to see, you know, it wasn't Top Rank, it wasn't Golden Boy, it wasn't BBC, it wasn't even something like Star Boxing or, you know, Selena Promotions. It was a true little man. Um, so, I, I mean, this is good to see. It's a little guy who's making his mark on boxing. Like I said, he's got a co-promotion on, on, on a Golden Boy card coming up. He's got, uh, you know, he's got a good fighter here. He's got, he's got a, again, I don't know what to make of Nathan Rodriguez. He's 18 years old. He's 9 and 0. He looks like he's good. He's a 122 pounder. Um, he's real tall for the size. You know, um, he looks like a good prospect. Where he goes from here, who knows, man? Who knows? Right? I mean, he's so far from being a world champion. He's 18. I'm not knocking him. I think he's a good prospect. So what I'm saying is that Marv and, and um, he's got something here, right? Like there's something – here with Marvin Rodriguez of, of Marv Nation. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, he's putting on a lot of shows. He, he's got, he, he's making some noise. I'm just curious, where is he independently wealthy? Right? Does he have 2.4 million sitting in his back pocket? If so, why isn't he investing in bigger fighters? And nothing, no shade at Nathan Rodriguez, but why, why not throw some money at established fighters if you have it sitting in your pocket like that? If not, and I suspect he doesn't, um, who's funding him? Where's this money coming from? Where's he getting the money to put this fight on? It's kind of my question. Where, where's he putting this money? Where's he getting this money to put this fight on? Um, it's interesting. So, I mean, this, I, I would think, and I don't know, this is all speculation that there's somebody, there's somebody financially supporting him, right? That there's some, it's not his own money. Um, and then the other question is, where's the TV going to come? Is he going to try to sell this thing on his own? Is he going to try to stream pay-per-views? Right? Is he going to sell it for 30 40 bucks and hope he can get enough pay-per-views? Because if you sell it for 50 or 75 if you sell it for 75 or 79 whatever, 75 99 79 99 you're going to get whacked, right? You're not going to sell a ton of these because it's not a pay-per-view fight. So you'd have to go in cheap. You'd have to try to lure people in, you know, okay, 30 bucks. All right, I'll spend 30 um, or does he have some kind of TV contract that we don't know about, right? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know any of this. Can he get a, a deal with the zone? Can he get a, a deal with ESPN? I mean, it seems unlikely that they're going to pick this up on a one shot deal. The zone might fight TV, um, pro box. Um, was it someone like that? Pick it up. And if so, I mean, this is the zone could, but if it's one of the other smaller apps, 2.4 million is a huge bag. How are they not going to get destroyed financially in this? Or are they writing this off? Is this not a is, is this a write-off for them? Do they not care? Do they just want this to have their name on right? Like you go to 
Madison Avenue, Fifth Avenue, New York City, right? You have all the Gucci, Louis Vuittons. They, little secret, they lose money on every single one of those stores, but they want that space. They want the Fifth Avenue, the Madison Avenue space so that they, you know, it, it, it gives them recognition to make money elsewhere. Is this a loss leader for them? Are they okay with taking a haircut on this to build their name? I don't know. Right. Again, I'm happy they're potentially another player. I think the more competition, the better in a lot of ways. Right. As long as it doesn't kind of split up the talent more. But at least for the time being, you know, if he came in now and he got to a Joe DeGuardia star boxing level, he, he's not, he doesn't have the stable to stand on his own. So he's going to mix and match his fighters with the best fighters he can. That's good. That's good for the sport. Um, but I, I was shocked that he, he won it. And, and not only did he win it, but he came with $2.4 million for this fight, which is good for these guys, good for them to get paid. It's just shocking to me where he, where, like, if he has this kind of money, why hadn't we heard of him before? Why is he putting on his own big shows? If he's got $2.4 million without a TV deal. Like, you guys get how... Your money comes from TV, right? The reason why PBC has more money than your local, whatever you live, your local show is because of TV rights. He doesn't have any TV rights, but he's got $2.4 million to throw away or to risk or to gamble, or however you want to look at it. That's interesting to me. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Are you intrigued by this? Are you rooting for this guy? Uh, do you think that this is just really, really strange and that this is corrupted or something? Um, I've got a lot of thoughts. I, I hope it works out. I hope we have another player in the boxing business. I, I want to see his prospect, Nathan Rodriguez, and I, and I want to see this fight, and I want this guy to, to succeed. I, even I don't know anything about him. Uh, but let me know what you think. Leave, leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, it is August 3rd. Oh, please subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene, all forms of social media. Please follow us, all forms. And please subscribe to um, – I'm sorry, please subscribe to 3D Boxing, all forms of social media, and please subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is August 30th, 2022, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.